how can I compare my cable line authentic audio images to transparent? If you remember, I had the transparent cables here, the, the Magnum Opus, I've had those in here. I've had the regular, the Opus, the model under it. Um, and I am quite familiar with the brand. In my opinion, and I will be 100% biased while I say this, because I am a dealer for authentic audio image. I'm not going to lie here. I'm not going to be uh, dishonest. I prefer my cable line because my cable line adds musicality, sweetness. There is a feeling to the music that I feel transparent misses. Transparent has a lot of detail, a lot of information. It's got good clarity. Uh, but the problem with transparent, again, one man's opinion. So your experience may be different. One knock with transparent is that there is so much information that sometimes it's like it's like hearing overload. It's like there is such thing as too much of a good thing. And so you find yourself finding the sweet spot when it comes to volume, trying to figure out, is it too loud? Yeah, it's getting to me. Turn it down a little more. Okay, that's better. What happens is that volume that you set now doesn't work for the next song. Because remember, songs don't have like a standard volume level that they are recorded, okay? So volume levels go up and down as, a, as you switch tracks, remember? And so when you're starting to change songs with transparent, you have to do a lot more of that volume effort. You have to make more effort trying to dial it back, dial it forward. And so transparent tends to be all about detail and clarity. But to me, over time, I started to understand better that it was getting to me. It was getting to a point in which I couldn't sit in front of my system for hours on end. Unless, of course, I had the volume low enough where it didn't bother me, okay? But there was a lot of nice traits with transparent cables. There were a lot of nice things happening, a lot of nice imaging specifically. I remember the images with transparent being very dense, uh, very vivid, lively, if you will. Uh, but holistically, the information to me was almost like an like an MRI machine, too much of a good thing. And so you have to find a perfect balance. For me, that's the balance that my cable line brings to the table, where it gives you the detail, but it doesn't force the detail down your throat. You hear it. It's clean. It's very clear. Um, every single cable that I have let other people audition, they have and they ended up buying it, okay? And that's because of that, because it sounds very clean and clear. It doesn't overload your senses, okay? Um, for me, it's just natural sounding. That's what's so attractive about my cable line authentic audio images. Am I going to get dedicated ground rods for my grounding system? I don't think so. Um, I just think that there is enough with the grounding conversations for me for now. I have been playing with the Shunyata. Altera Grounding Hub, in case you must know. And if you do not know my take on this Grounding Hub, I urge you again to become a member of my website. I just dropped a video yesterday for my members only. You can see my impressions of the Altera Grounding Hub from Shunyata. So aside from that, I don't think I'm going to embark on doing grounding rods outside in the ground or anything like that. I do have an older home. Um, so I'm not going to say that my electrical is the latest and greatest. I'm sure I have all wires throughout the house, but it is what it is. You know, um, I just don't feel like I want to embark on that. I don't want to start follow going through that rabbit hole, if that makes sense. What do I think about Mark Levinson 532H? The amplifier, you, there's an amplifier that I have. Um, you probably can't see it, but it's on this side right below, I think right here. See this amplifier right there? Right here. That's a Mark Levinson 533H, three channel. Sounds the same as the 532H, which is the two channel version. I fell in love with Mark Levinson probably seven to eight years ago. And it was with these amplifiers, the 530 series, H series, okay? It's a lot of nice, qualities about these amplifiers. They have a very beautiful uh, mid-range and the detail is there. It sounds really nice at low volume. That's one of the things that I really appreciate about these Mark Levinson amplifiers. 
the low low volume detail and nuance is so great and it's it never feels forced the bass on those amplifiers isn't really at the level of some of the best amplifiers out there so if you're looking for bass with a Mark Levinson amplifier, I am here to tell you you're looking in the wrong amplification. You're looking in the wrong brand. Mark Levinson has never been the king of bass. It's always been good holistically, but it's never been great at anything. It doesn't excel at anything. It does good things, but it doesn't really master anything. For instance, Griffin masters the soundstage, the grip, the dynamics. Boulder masters the nuance, the detail, the speed. Mark Levinson doesn't master any of those, okay? But it doesn't make it a bad amplifier. I want to say that it does not make the amplifier a poor choice. I do believe that the construction is bulletproof. I've had that amplifier maybe seven years, and I have never had an issue with it. Zero hiccups, okay? Zero. So if you're looking for that, and you're looking for a reliable amplifier that you can get on the used market for approximately... I want to say you can probably find that amplifier for about four grand, forty five hundred bucks. It's a good amplifier. Originally, the MSRP of this amplifier was ten grand, twelve grand. So if you can find it for a third of the price, it's a no brainer, and it's well constructed. It doesn't really run hot either, uh, so you can put it in a rack somewhere for your home theater. You can build a great two channel system around the Mark Levinson pieces, so you can do like a five thirty two H for your front left and front right, and you can do a five thirty three for the center and the rears if you're doing a 5.1 uh, surround sound system. Or you can buy the 535H, which is a five-channel version, and that allows you to run your center and your rears all together, giving you like a 7.1 system. So there are a lot of flexibilities with these Mark Levinson amplifiers. Uh, for home theater, they're killers. I will tell you that. They're really, they are really good for home theater. Is it true that short speakers cannot throw a tall presentation? Look, can I see a bookshelf speaker throw the size of the soundstage that my XVXs do? No, I can't see that. It's the loss of physics. You can't. You can't compensate for the height of the speaker, okay? Unless you put the bookshelf really high up, but then you lost all the information below, okay? No, I don't think so. However, I have heard great bookshelf speakers or stand mount speakers. I'll give you a perfect example of that. The TAD reference uh, stand mount speaker was absolutely incredible. It sounded like a huge speaker, okay? It's not a small bookshelf, but it's not the size of my XVXs. I felt like I had the right size, the right proportions when it came to soundstage. Never felt what, like I, I was missing something up top or below. Very well-balanced speaker. I will say yes. If you look hard enough, you can find a good sounding bookshelf stand mount speaker that can give you a nice size sound stage but no it will never be as tall as the tall speakers it's just the laws of physics however do you really want that do you really want a tall sound stage i mean is that the issue um, if that's the issue then maybe you shouldn't be looking at stand mount speakers bookshelf speakers maybe you should be looking at floor standing speakers